hello welcome back to my channel uh today we begin our course on uh, retail and wholesale management an essential course for uh, students of marketing because uh the retail and wholesale process completes the production process it is the medium through which the products and services get to the final consumers and in absence of that it would be ex extensively difficult for companies to operate by selling their products and services directly to the customers okay i am still your tutor mr benetti loka and i'm glad to have you around for this uh, lecture okay so we begin uh, the course by stating categorically that retailers and wholesalers complete the production process yes because uh, in the economics of business production is said to be complete only when the customers final consumers have purchased the said products or services because it is by making such purchases that the company will be able to generate the revenues they need and of course continue in a sustainable process so when we talk about uh, wholesale and retail in nigeria a whole number of uh, uh, corporations come to mind but in this case we have to make particular reference to urban stores because uh, uh, it could be uh, Time to be one of the founders or pioneers of retailing in the Nigerian uh, sector. Okay, forget about the big brands we have now entering the Nigerian market. The entire retail process in Nigeria would not be complete in the absence of uh, uh, early starters like Robin Stores, Eastern Shop, and so on and so forth. So, here particularly, we focus on Robin Stores. So, let us uh, take a brief uh, look at uh, the history of Roban Stores before we proceed into the full detail of the course. Roban Stores was established in 1999, okay? Uh, it changed its name from an uh, ultimate gift to Roban Stores. Initially, it was more of a gift company where people could actually buy uh, different gifts for friends, families, and so on. So the company opened its first store a small grocery store that serves the needs of uh, the people living within that area at Opera Avenue in Enugu and it's still uh, existing down to today okay so the store you have at uh, Opera Avenue is actually the first urban stores in Nigeria okay since then the company has been able to expand these operations within Enugu Anambra and uh, Ebony State, and then uh, we should expect more expansions across the entire Nigeria and possibly outside Nigeria in the near future. Okay, so Ruban story is a model for us in this study because it tells a story of an early beginner that never gave up and continued to align his uh, business operations and processes with the uh, trends in the market and continue to grow and uh, expand. So uh, unlike uh, most of uh, its fellow early beginners, it's still in high existence today and it's still waxing up. So we are going to use this uh, store as the model for retail and wholesale operations in Nigeria throughout this course. Although we'll be making references to other stores as well. Thank you. So we begin by asking the question, what is retailing? Retailing is all the actions that are related to direct sale of goods or services to the end customers, of which these end customers use the said products and services for their personal non-commercial purposes. Okay, that is what retailing is all about. So if a company that is uh, into manufacturing of biscuits is buying flour, the company is actually buying a semi-processed goods which it will use to manufacture biscuit, a fully processed product. So in this whole scenario, the company cannot be considered a, a, a retail process or a, or a buying from a retailer because the company is not consuming that good per se. So when we talk about retailing, we mean all the activities related to the final consumers being able to use, being able to purchase, being able to utilize a product for their own personal non-commercial purposes okay so that is what retailing is all about so who is a retailer a retailer is any company whose main revenue is derived from the retail sales any company that is into the business of uh, selling 
goods and services to the final customer is actually a retailer okay it could actually also be an individual who owns or runs a business that is into the service of uh, providing goods and services to the final customer so all the stores you see around you where you can actually go in and purchase any kind of stuff you need you know, whether it's biscuits milk uh, butter bread all these are retail outlets because they are into the business of making sure that you the final customer is able to access any product you need whenever and wherever you need them okay so what are the roles of uh, retailers retailers uh, play a lot of roles and here we are going to look at some of them first of course they complete the production process by making sure that the customers needs and wants are satisfied and then generating revenue for the manufacturers uh, through sales yes it is only when the customers need if a customer wants to drink water or wants to drink wine it is only when you give the customers wine or water that the person will, able, will, will be able to satisfy his or her name. and then in the process the customer will have to pay you for that uh, product so this is the main role of retailing. It completes the production process. It is at this point that the customers are able to meet their needs and wants. And of course, the company is able to generate revenue by satisfying these said needs and their wants. Okay. Secondly, they connect brands to customers in what is described as the last mile or final part in the customer journey. Okay. So that is why we say retailing is all about the activities that entail or ensure that customers are able to assess products and services they need for their personal consumption. So the last part of last mile is, this, is the point at which the product gets to the customer that we consume it. Okay. So thirdly, it is a source of employment and economic development. Of course, you could virtually see different kinds of retail stores around you. And uh, these are run by people, owned by people, operated by people. And of course, they generate uh, their own personal revenue. They are able to sustain their own personal life through that process. In return, paying taxes to the government. And of course, aiding the overall economic development of the Nigerian state. Okay? Fourth, they aid product innovation through feedback from the customers. Yes, when the customers have issues or complain about a particular product, they relay that to the retailer who relay that to the wholesaler and then finally it gets, gets to the company who now makes adjustments before reintroducing the product into the market so retailers are very essential when it comes to product innovation their complaints their feedback are what helps the company to innovate in ways that better satisfy the needs and wants of the customers okay so in the whole retail process it is uh, possible for you to actually go into the retail outlet, especially the big uh, corporations like Roban stores, and see competing brands, varieties of brands. If you want biscuits and you happen to go to the biscuit section of Roban stores, you might end up being confused because you are going to meet varieties of choice, choices both locally manufactured, imported, and so on and so forth. And then you will be forced to make decisions as to impulse decision within that moment as to which brand or product to go for. Okay, this is where shopper marketing comes in. Okay, shopper marketing is a process that is based on utilizing store promotions and advertisements to extend the reputation of the brand to the final consumer in their final journey. Okay, and as such, encourage positive process uh, decisions from these customers within the store so for instance when you walk into the ribbon stores you might see some people marketing let's say you want to buy wine you might see some people marketing a particular brand of wine they might even be willing to give you a uh, taste they encourage you to have a taste of their product because in the process you will be able uh, or, or, or in a better position to assess the product and of course develop positive attitude towards possible purchase so this is what we call shopper marketing marketing the product to the final customers at the point of sale with intention with the intention of persuading them to purchase impulsively at that moment or at least to build the reputation of your brand in the process okay 
So, Shopper marketing involves focusing on the entire marketing process from products and brand development to logistics, promotion and merchandising, with the intention of turning the shopper into actual buyer at that particular point in time. Okay, when they give you samples of their product, the intention is that you, when if you like, the, you will like the product, and of course, if you like the product, you will purchase. The intention is to make you purchase that particular product at that point in time. By walking to the wine section, it is believed that you want to purchase wine. So when they give you that sample, they want you to have a taste. They want you to gain interest and possibly purchase at that point in time. Are you getting the point? Okay. Therefore, everywhere design marketing efforts focuses on the customer buying behavior, which of course is part of the shopper marketing process. The focus is on twisting, possibly twisting or forcing shift in behavior towards the purchase of that particular product that they are marketing to you. Okay. So they are different kinds of retailers and we want to consider them. First is specialty store. This is a store that carries an arrow product line with deep assortment such as apparel stores, sporting goods stores, furniture stores, florist and their bookstores. Okay. A clothing store would be a single line store. Okay. A men's clothing store would be a limited line eh, store and a men's custom shirt store would be a super specialty store so when we talk about specialty store we are talking about those stores that have narrowed their retail process or retail activities to a particular product okay so for instance when you walk into uh Obwete, you will tend to see that majority of them are specialty stores when you want to walk into a boy the main market majority of them are specialty stores is it that they are selling clothings or shoes or books or whatever it is it will be very difficult to see a store in at all boy that specializes in mixing all these products together no so mo most of them are specialty stores they specialize in a particular product that is the way to view it a specialty store is a store that specializes in a particular product so here we give the example of a clothing store that uh, sells mixed clothing stores mixed clothing both for male and female that will be a single line clothing store then when it focuses only on the male clothing, it will be a limited line eh, clothing store. Then when it focuses on the custom male clothing, okay, it will be a super specialty store. Are you getting the point? So second is the department store, or sometimes refers to departmental store. Okay, it's a retail establishment that. Eh, offers diverse selection of product lines usually including clothing home, in, home furnishings and uh, furnitures and other household goods okay each product line operates as an individual department that is overseen by a specialist uh, merchandiser or a specialist for the buyers are you getting the point so when you when you take uh, most of the superstars in 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 in, in Nugu and Nigeria, you see that most of them are kind of uh, departmentalized. Ruban store, for instance, when you want to buy wine, there's a wine section department for wine. There's a section for uh, cereals. There's a section for biscuit. There's a section for clothing. There's a section for beauty and so on and so forth so although it's a superstore it is actually departmentalized so when we talk about departmental or department stores we are looking at the fact that the store is divided into different sections that cover different specialties a store that has different specialties divided according to different sections okay so when you are in the, the, the wine section you get to see wines when you're in the cereal section you get to see cereals that's what we are trying to uh, look at here okay then you have the third which is a super supermarket okay it is a relatively large self-service retail operation with low cost low margin and high volume 
and the, the primary purpose is to cater for the customer's uh, complete requirement for groceries and household products okay you tend to see that uh, most of uh, the stores in, in around us uh, seem to be supermarket basically they are not uh, uh, departmentalized when you walk in you get to see different kinds of uh, products household groceries and products that you need for immediate use uh, your your cereals your biscuits your bread your milk your uh, beverages and so on and so forth all these are supermarket they, they are not departmental everything is together within that uh, little cubicle you know trying to make sure that customers have their uh, access to their immediate uh, needs ability to satisfy their immediate household uh, needs okay so we have the convenience store which of course is a relatively compact retail establishment okay that is situated in close proximity to residential areas and they tend to operate extended hours throughout the week and offer a selected range of fast selling convenience products at slightly elevated uh, prices this is more of what we have around us those small small stores you have around your streets those small small stores you have in front of your house where you can just walk in uh, from 6 a.m to 9 p.m 10 p.m 12 p.m these are convenience stores they are there to service your your need at your own convenience of course the prices would naturally be higher okay so these convenience stores go to uh the specialty stores at Obwete to buy their products and then they have to add in the cost of uh, transportation and profit on top before selling them to you okay so we have the discount store which is of course a store that carries standard merchandise that are sold at lower prices with lower margins and uh, higher volumes uh this is actually difficult to see in uh, nigeria we could have given the example of uh, shop right based on the fact that it, the prices seem to be lower prices but they are not uh, lower uh, margins although they, they have higher volume of sales per se okay so basically this is what a discount store is all about the products are priced lower than that of uh, competing brands and then uh, with lower margins and the uh, higher volumes okay so with uh, the different uh, 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 types of retailers uh, coming to an end we now look at uh, off price uh, retailers uh, this is a retail establishment that offers uh, merchandise products at a discounted wholesale prices and sold below regular retail uh, prices okay shop right does that then often consisting of uh, leftover goods no their products are direct from the manufacturer so they can't actually be considered off price retailers okay they are more of a discount superstore uh, retail system okay often consists consisting of leftover goods overruns and irregular items obtained at a reduced rate from the manufacturers or other retailers yeah these stores are compact factory outlets that are owned and operated by the manufacturers themselves independent of price uh, retailers managed by the entrepreneurs uh, divisions of larger retail corporations and warehouse clubs that provide a limited assortment of brands groceries appliances clothing and other products as a, at a substantial discount to the customer who pay membership uh, fee this is more pronounced in the advanced nations us europe uh, it's quite difficult to see an off price uh, retail outlet in nigeria although most of these stores seem to combine some elements of this off price uh, retailer but however they are not full of price uh, retailers when you look at them closely they are either uh, convenience stores or uh, discount stores okay then you now have the super stores which is a large very large we say very large store that is traditionally aimed at meeting customers to turn it for routinely purchase food and non-food items these categories include super centers combined supermarkets and discount stores and category uh, k 
class which carry a deep assortment in a particular category and have a knowledgeable staff. This is Ruben Store. This is Spa. This is Shoprite. Are you getting the point? Okay. Next, for those in uh, Abuja and so on, we don't have next here in Enugu. Okay. So this is what we describe as a superstore. They are large, they carry extensive food and non-food products. Their staffs are knowledgeable. Whatever question you ask them about the product in question, they would be able to answer and attend to them. Are you getting it? Okay. So, we now go into the types of retail organizations. We have looked at the different types of uh, retailers. Now we are looking at the types of retail organizations. They are some uh, elements or uh, features that make a retailer okay so that is what we are going to consider here the major type of retail organizations are corporate chain voluntary chain retail cooperatives and their franchise uh, organizations so first we begin with corporate chain okay two or more they are two or more, they represent two or more retail establishments that share common ownership and control Okay, corporate chains are present in various types of retailing with their most significant presence being observed in the department store, discount store, food store, drug store, and the restaurant. Okay, uh, corporate chain specific. A good example is the Chicken Republic. Two or more retail establishments and they share common ownership and their control. Whether you are having your meal in Chicken Republic at uh, Enugu or Anambra or Abuja, the ownership and control is still within the same office. They define what you get and how you get it. Uh, KFC, for instance, irrespective of the fact that it's vast across the globe, the operation, the ingredients, the some of the products or majority of the products are still sourced from a central uh, warehouse. Okay, that is a good example of a corporate chain. Then you have the voluntary chain store, which is a group of independent retailers that are involved in group buying and merchandising. Okay, sponsored by a whole seller per se. Okay, they buy in group like all these online vendors they have a whatsapp groups where they buy the wholesaler imports the product from china korea wherever it is then they buy in group from that same wholesaler are you getting the point sometimes at discounted rates sometimes at credit uh, 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 schemes which they have to pay okay which they have to pay after uh making their sales okay so you have the retailer cooperative which is a group of uh, independent retailers who jointly establish a central buying organization and conduct joint promotion efforts then you have the franchise organization a contractual association between a franchisor okay who is the manufacturer the wholesaler or service organization and the franchisee the independent business person that buys the right to own and operate one or more units of the franchise uh, system all the dominoes pizzas you have in nigeria or the kfc's you have in nigeria these are franchise uh, operations they are owned by the the uh, corporate offices abroad and the nigerians buy the right to run and operate them here in nigeria following their laid down rules and regulations so that whether you are eating your KFC chicken in Nigeria or in South Africa or in Kenya or in Sierra Leone, it would still taste the same as it would if you were to be eating that at uh, Kentucky in the uh, USA. Okay? So, as a retailer, there are a number of decisions you have to make to be able to operate a sustainable business or a sustainable retail service and uh, now we are going to look at retailer marketing uh, decisions retailers are always searching for new marketing strategies to attract and hold customers yes because uh, of the fact that today's assortments and services are more or less the same if you go into Ruban store shop right or spa you tend to see that they are more or less uh, the same 
they are departmentalized they have they have uh, discounted products purchased at a lower price from the manufacturer and then of course sold at a cheaper price compared to the convenience uh, stores okay so how do you now and they are all located within the city areas how do you now differentiate yourself as a retailer how do you now entice the customers to continue buying from you this is where they uh, go into certain services like uh, a membership card you know you can have obtain your membership spa membership card or robust membership card whereby after certain purchase you'll be given uh, 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 after certain based on your purchase you'll be giving some discount for your future uh, purchases or possibly be allowed to buy a product for free depending on uh, the credit uh, uh, point you have scored by purchasing frequently from the set the, 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 the agenda the aim is to make sure or to ensure that you continue to purchase from them forever okay and they, they try to entice you with that uh, point so that over time you'll be able to use them to assess uh, discounted rates or assess products without actually paying for them okay so a number of decisions have to be made and here they are first you look at segmentation targeting differentiation and positioning okay as a as a marketer and a retailer per se before making a decision about your product assessment that is the kind of product you want to carry you want to sell as a retailer services pricing advertisements store decor and other aspects that support the their positions it is important to start by segmenting and defining the target market do you want to uh, service uh, uh, females within the fashion sector or uh, males within the luxury sector you have to segment and define your target market okay then you must be able to determine whether they are focus your focus will be on upscale middle scale or downscale shoppers okay discount sales luxury products or combination of both and understand that your target customers have desires and your job is to fulfill these desires such as variety depth of assortment convenience or low price which of course most of these uh, superstores focus on okay you have to provide your market as it is crucial for you as a retailer to make consistent and effective choices that will help you differentiate and position yourself in the respective market so the first step is to segment then you target them and then you differentiate yourself through the quality of services that you offer and of course at the end of the day you position yourself in the market okay the second decision is product assortment and service decisions retailers must now decide on three major products variables first is product assortment second is service mix and the store atmosphere okay you have to define the kind of product you want to be selling based on your segmentation and targeting okay so one of the strategies is to offer merchandise that no other competitor carries such as a store brand or a national brand or one which holds a exclusivity okay the service mix can also help set one retailer apart from the other yeah because uh, for instance some retailers invite customers to ask questions or consult service representatives in person or via phone or keyboard by asking that questions they better understand what the customers need and are in a better position to meet these uh, needs okay so product says assortment and service decisions are part of the decisions you must make as a retailer to be able to excel to be able to succeed in the retail process okay then you also have to face the price decision a retailer's pricing strategy should be in line with the target market positioning products and service offerings as well as considering the competition within the market okay and economic conditions are you getting the point now we as nigerians we are facing an ex a, a, a strict or uh, a worsened economic condition under the leadership of uh, president tinebu okay and as a retailer you have to consider all this you have to put all this into considerations 
things are high fuel prices is so skyrocketing exchange rate is just on on the uh, red zone and how do we actually survive you you have to put all this into consideration when setting your prices because they will determine whether your customers will come back whether others will be willing to purchase from you so while retailers desire high markups and high volume achieving both simultaneously is often challenging yes it's difficult to actually make high sales and high profit at the same time you know so retailers will naturally pursue one or two of these approaches so you should focus more on seeking high markup on lower volume or uh, lower markup and a higher volume depending on what product or service line you are into that is why the issue of product assortment and the service mix like we discuss here is very very important you must define the product you want to be providing for your customers based on your uh, market segmentation targeting and their positioning strategy okay promotion decision of course retailers should employ various promotion tools including advertising personal selling sales promotion public relations and direct marketing to engage your customers the use of advertising tools like magazines and newspapers radio television and internet should uh, help you communicate your value should help you communicate the product services you sell should help you communicate the discount for certain products at certain points in time okay and as such help in uh, bridging the gap between customers decision and your actual product offering because by so doing customers will be able to know what you are selling how you are selling them when you are selling them and better decide whether they want to purchase from you okay you also have to look at the place decision where you are located will determine the kind of customers that we visit the kind of customers that we buy when they will buy how you operate there are certain areas will be it wouldn't be convenient for you to operate your business at later ones due to insecurity issues there are areas you would be you can comfortably operate your business 24 7. so you have to consider all this into uh, the decision process you have to determine the markup volume or you have to determine the turn up you have to determine the number of customers you intend services and this will help you define the locality define the area that you are going to open your retail outlet okay then shopping center okay is one of uh, those classic retail outlets that consider all these elements okay a shopping center refers to a collection of retail establishments situated on a planned developed owned and managed site as a unified entity as a unified entity okay you have the polo park mall where you have Shoprite, kfc kilimanjaro so on and so forth these are shopping centers are you getting the point okay the largest and most impressive type of shopping center is a regional shopping center yeah polo park mall is a regional shopping center and it's also known as a regional shopping mall which comprises of over 50 to 100 uh, stores okay including multiple full-time departmental stores and uh, in case of nigeria now the uh, 24 7 uh, services is actually quite difficult in most of the states and most of the localities okay however it resembles a covered miniature downtown area and attracts customers from a broad geographic uh, region a classic example is polo park mall okay whether you're coming there to shop or you are bringing your children for games and phones you have a uh, 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 roller coaster that they can actually enjoy you can come there to register your sim you can come there to open bank or conduct banking activities with ibtc first bank and so on okay so this is a classic example of a shopping center okay so on the other hand a community shopping center accommodates between 15 regional shopping center is full back more community shopping center coming between 15 and retail and 50 retail stores 
usually it is a branch of departmental or department stores or a variety store or a supermarket specialty store professional offices and occasionally a bank okay most common shopping centers are the neighborhood shopping centers or strip malls that houses about 5 to 15 uh, stores which we have all around us okay we have them all around us all these are uh, uh, uh retail outlets around us or these buildings where we can actually assess uh, different kinds of people or uh, services or products okay these centers are currently situated close to customers yes they are that is why i said we have them around us usually offer a supermarket possibly a discount store and several service oriented establishments like dry cleaners drugstore, video rental store, hardware store, local restaurant or other types of uh, stores, okay? So, these are the kind of uh, retail organizations we have. Now, we look at retailing trends and development. Retailers function within a challenging and rapidly evolving landscape, presenting both risks and their possibilities. As customers are expanding due to increase their population, there is also the expansion of retailers. In your area, you could actually be able to assess 10, 15, 20 retailers within just a few minutes of a walk from your house. So how do you choose which one to go to? How do you de define yeah, a retailer to remain loyal to? These retailers are always worried about that question and that is what they have to face in continuing the development and industrialization. And uh, that is what we are going to look at the trends and developments in the retailing uh, sector. Okay, you have the issue of slow economy and tighter consumer spending, typical of the Nigerian market today. The high price of where well, high exchange rates, ex everything is virtually expensive. So, uh, 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 the, the amount of products you could actually be able to assess with 10,000 naira 10 years ago or five years ago you would need maybe 30 40 50,000 to assess it now take for instance a bag of rice that i was uh, being sold at uh, 7,005 uh, during the jonathan administration you know what it costs today uh, between uh, 30 to 40,000 you know so that is what we are talking about. So there is the issue of slow economy and tighter consumer spending. Customers can no longer buy as many products as they could before. So how, as a retailer, you must be able to understand this challenge and know how to face them. Okay. There are new retail forms that have shortened the retail life cycle and the retail convergence. Yeah, today we have drop shipping. People can actually operate with their website, their other products from China after receiving payment from the final consumers and get it delivered to the final consumers. You know, all this bridge the gap, all this bridge the need for the final consumers to actually come to your store to make purchases. Okay, so this is what we call the wheel of retailing concept, and it provides a partial explanation of for various retailing innovations. According to this concept, novel retailing formats often start as a low margin, low price, and low status uh, operation, challenging established retailers that have experienced cost and margin increases. As these new retailers succeed, they upgrade their facilities and expand their services, leading to increased costs and their prices. Eventually, they resemble the conventional retailers they once challenged then there will also be a new set of retailers that will also come in to uh, begin their operations with the same concept of uh, low margin low price and low status operation that we also challenge them and this is how the way or the circle continues are you getting the point okay you have the rise of mega retailers yeah yeah uh, in those days you just have to make deal with robin stores eastern shop and so on Today we have superstores all around us in Nigeria. In any way alone, we have ShopRite, Spa, Game. You could mention as many as you could. All these mega retailers import products in uh, containers, in bulk, 
offer different kinds of varieties to the customers provide access to experienced staff that are able to explain and educate the customers on a particular product so all these mega retailers continue to threaten the life of the conventional retailers especially as they also offer their products at a reduced price you know although the reduction could be considered insignificant you know difference of one naira two naira five naira however the price constructs customers are always willing to go for them especially as they have uh, membership cards where the customers will be able to assess more discounts or free products as they continue to purchase from that mega retailer okay you also have the growth of non-store retailing yeah the drop shipping concept they don't need to open any physical store they just need a website where they will be able to uh, 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 market and promote different kinds of products and once a customer makes an order they will now buy from the company ship to the customer's house so the customer don't actually have to come to their store you know that convenience that customized experience all these things threaten the life of a retailer in the conventional setting okay so drop shipping as we have mentioned mentioning is a business model that allows you to sell products online without having to own or operate the physical location where those products are stored or processed this means you can start a, start an e-commerce business and sell a wide range of products without handling inventory and fulfillment you don't actually need to have the product in the physical setting you just have a website or uh, an online platform or handle where you advertise and market different kinds of products once the customers gain interest and pay for that product you now buy the product from the manufacturer and then ship to the customer you are just a middleman between the manufacturer and the customer and without the need to have a physical uh, office or uh, inventory and other fulfillment okay so you also have to look at the growing importance of uh, retail technology yeah nowadays retailers have to recognize the critical importance of incorporating advanced advanced technologies as powerful tools for staying competitive forward thinking retailers are utilizing sophisticated it and software systems to improve forecasting accuracy manage inventory costs establish electronic communication with suppliers share information between stores and even enable in-store sales to customers they have implemented advanced systems for checkout scanning rfid inventory tracking okay the rfid inventory tracking is uh the system which superstores used to know whether you have paid for a product for instance if you go to uh urban store and you pick a product without paying once you cross that uh, white um, uh, box the, at the exit level, it will blink. And I'll, it will send signal and there will be an alarm showing that that product you are going out with has not been paid for. Okay, but once you pay for that product at the counter, then it, the, 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 the system will send the signal to that RFID that this product coming out now has been paid for so there won't be an alarm are you getting the point okay so you also have the efficient merchandising handling seamless information sharing and interactive customer engagement these are all benefits of uh, the retail technologies that we have uh, today okay so we have the concept of green retailing whereby the focus is on ensuring sustainable retaining process how to manage your waste how to ensure that you are not contributing to uh, 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 environmental hazard greenhouse gas waste and so on and so forth you have to plan your retail system in such a way that uh, whatever waste you are producing is properly managed sent to the waste processing system you have to recycle as many things as you can that is the what the concept of uh, green retailing is all about and this has to be put into consideration because uh, we are in a such a precarious situation with regards to the overall sustainability of the human race and we all have to put in our efforts to ensure that the future generation will be able to enjoy the environment we are enjoying today okay 
global expansion of major retailers of course is also an issue in nigeria now like we said we have huge amount of them spa shop right game puma you name them kfc so on and so forth so all these uh, mega retailers that come into the nigerian market are threatening the conventional retailers especially as they offer in most of the cases higher quality products at a lower prices because they buy from the manufacturers at a reduced uh, price and then they are able to sell to the customers at a lower price okay so with the retailing process completed we now go into wholesale management okay wholesaling uh, is all the activities involved in selling goods and services to those buying for resale or business use Remember, retail is for those buying for final consumption. So, wholesale is for those buying for retail or business uh, use. So, when a company buys flour to manufacture biscuit, then the process is wholesale. But when a customer buys the biscuits manufactured by the company that bought the flour, the process is retailing. Okay? Who is a wholesaler? A wholesaler is a firm engaged primarily in wholesaling activities. Wholesalers buy mostly from producers and sell mostly to retailers, industrial cons consumers, and other wholesalers. As a result, many of the nation's largest and most important wholesalers are largely unknown to the final customers because they don't sell to the final customers. Okay, so we look at the importance of wholesalers selling and their promotion. Of course, the wholesalers are able to buy significant amount of products from the manufacturers and then promote them in the process by uh, encouraging other wholesalers uh, industrial consumers or uh, retailers to buy that particular product they also buy uh, they also play the important role of buying an assessment assortment building because they can select items and build assortments needed by the customers and thereby save much work they also play the role of bulk be, uh, bearing or bulk breaking because they buy products in bulk cartons and then break them in uh, units for the retail, different retailers to purchase and sell to the final customers of course warehousing because after manufacturing they buy from the manufacturer and then store leaving space for the manufacturer to remanufacture or manufacture other products okay transportation yeah they play the role of moving the product from the company where they are manufactured to their warehouse also from their warehouse to the retailers at some point okay financing wholesalers are also able to finance the manufacturing process by paying the company in advance for a product they want which the company will now manufacture and send to them okay so risk bearing yes they also bear the risk of uh, uh, making sure that products and services get to the final customers because they go to the company to buy and then sell to the uh, retailers who now sell to the uh, final customers so sometimes when the products uh, get spoiled within their care warehouse they have to uh, bear the expenses for such a spoilage market information yes when the customers like we said when the customers have complaint or feedback they send to the retailer who sent to the wholesaler and then wholesaler relay that information back to the customer for innovative poses okay management services and advice wholesalers often help retailers train their sell clerks improve store layouts and displays and set up accounting and inventory control system so these are the importance or roles being played by uh, wholesalers okay just like the retailers we also have different kinds of uh, wholesalers but wholesalers form many within three major groups you have the merchant wholesaler agents and the brokers and the manufacturers sales branches and their offices the merchant wholesalers are the large single group of wholesalers accounting for roughly 50 percent of all wholesaling okay those are big uh, uh, wholesalers that buy products from the Nigerian breweries, different kinds of drinks, where you will now, the retailers now go to buy them in fewer cartons and sell to the final consumers. These are the merchant wholesalers. Merchant wholesalers 
and go to broader types full service wholesalers and limited uh, service wholesalers the full service wholesalers buy different kinds of uh, products limited service wholesalers focus on a particular product okay full service wholesalers provide a full set of services whereas the various limited service wholesalers offer fewer services to their suppliers and uh, customers different types of limited service wholesalers perform different specialized functions in the distribution uh, channel okay on the other hand brokers and agents are different from merchant wholesalers in two ways they do not take title to the goods okay and they perform only a few functions like merchant wholesalers they generally specialize by product line or customer type a clear definition of a broker is someone that brings buyers and sellers together and assists in a negotiation. Okay, a dropshipper. A dropshipper is actually uh, a, 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 a wholesaler, uh, in a retailer, or also a wholesaler. But we could look a drop. We could look at a dropshipper as a broker in the sense that it brings the customer he or she brings the customer and company together by being in the middle okay and helping negotiate the price and once the customer agrees the customer pays to the dropshipper who pays the company and then the company ship to the dropshipper who ships to the company okay agents on the other hand represent the buyers or sellers on a more permanent basis manufacturers agents agents on the other hand represent the buyers or uh, uh, buyers or sellers on a more permanent basis. You have the manufacturer agents who are also called the uh, manufacturer representatives, representatives. They are the most common type of uh, agent uh, wholesalers. The third major type of wholesaling is that done in manufacturer sales uh, branches. Okay, the care uh, branch or innocent branch where you can actually work in and uh, purchase any car product of your choice okay just like in the host uh, retail process we also have uh, decisions that hustlers must make because hustlers are now facing growing competitive pressure more demanding customers new technologies and more direct buying programs on the part of large industrial institutional and the retail uh, buyers so as a hustler there are a whole lot of decisions you have to make just as yes, in the case of retailing, you also have to decide on how to segment people to target, you have to differentiate and position yourself in the market. Okay, you cannot serve everyone, you must define your market, you must define a given target that you are going to focus on how to differentiate your products and position yourself. Okay. So you also have to look at marketing mix decision, the product you are going to carry in terms of product assessment, the pricing strategy you are going to use, depending on the product you are carrying, how you are going to promote the, 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 the product, and then location, where you are going to be located based on the market that you are servicing, okay? There are a significant number of trends in wholesaling today, and the, the industry remains vulnerable in the sense that uh, uh, there are, is increased competition, there are increased uh, 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 change in customers' uh, tastes and trends. They have added to the recent economic conditions. So we, you as a wholesaler, you also have to progressively watch for better ways to meet the changing needs of your suppliers and target the uh, customers. You must recognize that the only reason for your existence is to add value by increasing efficiency and effectiveness of the entire marketing channel. So all these challenges, economic challenges, change in customer taste, competitiveness or competition, you have to look at all these challenges and be able to manage them, know how to manage them effectively and uh, efficiently, okay? So uh, this, we come to the end of this lecture, which is uh, on uh, retail and wholesale management. We look, started by saying that retailers and wholesalers complete the production process, yes, because they bring the manufactured product down to the final consumers, okay? 
So we looked at retailing as all activities related to the direct sale of goods or services to the final consumers. A retailer is a company that is involved in such process. We also looked at the roles of retailers in terms of completing the production process, connecting brands to customers, source of employment and economic development, and uh, aid in production, innovation, and uh, uh, true feedback from customers. We looked at shopper marketing as direct marketing of a brand to the customers at the point of purchase. Okay, so we looked at types of retailer specialty store, focus on one particular product, departmental store, departmentalized each product by section, supermarkets uh, able to have, offer different ranges of products for customers' uh, satisfaction. Convenience store, dear at customer's door, although at a higher price, discount store, reduced price, off-price store, or retailer. Uh, supermarkets, what we now have in most of our cities. And then uh, we looked at the different types of retail organizations, corporate chain, okay? Uh, different brands being owned by the same management and operating under the same street conditions. Voluntary chain, okay, whereby a retailer sponsors, a wholesaler sponsors retailers who buy from him or her. You have the retail cooperative franchise organization. You also have the need for retailers to make certain decisions about their whole marketing uh, process, okay, which starts with segmentation, defining your target market, differentiating yourself from that of other retailers, and positioning yourself in the market. Product assortment and service decisions also have to be considered. Look at the pricing strategy depending on the product that you are offering. Okay, promotion, place, and of course, a shopping center as a unique setting or a unique example of a retailer that encompasses all these uh, decisions. Okay, so retail trends and development, slow the economy and tighter consumer buying power has reduced overall sales for retailers. You also have to look at the new retail form, shortening retail life and retail convergence. Okay, the rise of mega retailers and growth of non-store retailing, which is drop shipping. Of course, we define drop shipping and then we went to and by looking at the importance of retail technology. Okay, and then green retailing as well as the global expansion of major retailers before we ventured into wholesale management. Wholesalers are all activities that involved in uh, selling goods and services to those buying for resale or business uh, purposes. Wholesalers are a company that engages in such uh, activity. Importance of wholesalers selling and promotion, buying and assortment building, bulk breaking, warehousing, transportation, finance, risk bearing, market information, management services, and uh, advice. Types of wholesalers as merchant wholesalers. Of course, merchant wholesalers can be full service merchant wholesalers or limited service merchant wholesalers, whereby full service merchant wholesalers sell all kinds of uh, 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 products. Limited service wholesalers are more of a specialty store under the retail sales team that focus on a particular product. We have the agents and brokers. The broker uh, do not uh, uh, have possession of the product. They just uh, connect the customers and the buyers. Why agents are more on a permanent uh, basis with the, cost, uh, the company and customer, okay? Hostlers also have to make the decision of uh, segmentation, targeting, differentiation, and position, as well as marketing mix decision of a uh, product to carry, prices of the product, promotion of this product, and place, okay? Then trends in wholesaling, which of course include uh, competitiveness, tighter economic uh, uh, growth, and uh, others okay so i uh, to conclude by saying that uh, the retail and wholesaling process are actually extensive however with a uh, significant effort or and focus and ability to be able to make certain specialized decisions about your products or services you will be able to develop a sustainable retailing or wholesale business Thank you for coming around and uh, we do hope to see you in uh, our subsequent uh, video.